What's up YouTube? It's Adrian from MMO's World. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a first impressions look at Secret World Legends. This is a online shared RPG world, essentially an MMO by Funcom. And it is a relaunch of 2012's The Secret World, which is essentially the same game uh, with a lot of changes. So Secret World Legends now is completely free to play. And there's been a lot of improvements done to this game from the combat system and, you know, story uh, being made more streamlined, the upgrade system, there's a whole bunch that they've done to Secret World Legends. And But of course, it is free to play now, which is probably one of the biggest changes. So what is Secret World Legends for those that haven't played it before? It's a modern day urban horror uh, setting in this MMO where, you know, all kinds of creatures from vampires to werewolves, they all exist. And this Secret World is run by, you know, these three secret societies. You got the Illuminati, you got the Templars, and then you got the Dragon as well. And if you're a new player, you can click on these, you know, videos and see what they're all about. It's all so, about power. There's some backstory here. Grabbing I'm not going to spoil it, anything for it, you new players. It. So I'm just going to go ahead and let's go to the Illuminati. They're based in New York City. And now we get a first look at, you know, what the new character creation uh, system is like. Having had the benefit of playing the old game, The Secret World, I sort of have some knowledge about what it used to be. And um, I could talk about some of the changes in, in detail. But let's just go ahead and create a character real quick here. Um, you can change your character size at the bottom here. You may miss the slider, but you can actually adjust your height. Um, sadly, you still cannot change the you know your body size, and that's bit. And sadly, you still cannot change your body size, and that's been a thing since the old game. But you can make yourself ultra tall or you know small. Then instead of having more sliders, a lot of it's now just uh, menus here on the right. You can just choose your different head style or whatever and once you've picked a preset you can go with the color as well once you've done that you can just move on to face so instead of showing you the types of faces you pick from you know numericals one to four or whatever it's not as it's not as free-flowing as the old games character creation I, I personally think there's a lot of choices back in the old game which did not uh, transfer over but you can see that they've tried to put a lot more you know effort in making the facial i don't know aesthetics look better in some way i can tell it's definitely an upgrade not too much however so that's kind of disappointing but we should also take it as a sign that more work has gone into you know what the game essentially relaunched for which is uh making the combat system more enjoyable for the masses considering it is now free to play so I'm just gonna go with that. There is no, you know, random. I don't see any random option to make a random character or anything. So we'll just go with that for now. Hopefully, later on they'll introduce um, a barber shop, the Occam's Razor, I think it's called. Um, and in that shop, you could, you know, re, re select all your options, and hopefully they'll add new hairstyles and stuff to the game. Because clothing, you can buy clothing, and we'll go into that later on. So once you're done with the face, you have a certain, you have a bunch of stuff that you can, you know, put on in terms of clothes. Because it's modern day, you know, no elves here, no dwarves, nor no, you know, little hobbit things and no orcs and whatever. So it's all human. This is such a relatable game if you like that sort of stuff. So it is all modern day. You can totally relate to this. You can build yourself in your character by, you know, choosing the, the types of clothes. Uh, the types of clothes that, that you usually wear so I'm just gonna go with the random stuff and show you guys what you can do in game oops I put on a coat which means you can't really see what's under yeah you get all these little choices as I said you can make you can get more clothing options in store in the store later on in the game so let's just go with that no coat legs you've got jeans and leather pants and hot pants and uh, you know, skirts whatever really whatever these are whatever you picked here will be permanent so it'll be added to your dressing room later on but then you'll also gain more outfit more outfits as you progress along the game so let's go ahead with that and now one of the big changes here to the combat system is how they overall everything right so if those of you who are coming from the secret world you know what the uh, skill wheel is skill wheel is a circle which had about 500 plus skills passives actives whatever and you drag them and you put them on your skill bar that's now gone so they've made it more streamlined and they've also provided 
some of the decks from the old game the decks are now classes but you know these aren't permanent classes what they mean by class is basically your weapons the two weapons that you're gonna get as starting weapons weapons dictate the types of skills that you will get in game for example blade you got dancing blade skill and the elemental is gonna be your secondary weapon that's gonna give you a fire bolt so how you get different types of you know skills will be based on the types of weapons that you're gonna equip and we'll go into that later on but so far you can see all the weapons here and all you gotta do is select which one sounds good to you there's a difficulty bar here at the bottom so it'll tell you which one's hard which one's easy and I really I've tried a bunch they're all not that difficult and there is the classic archetype stuff so if you want to be a tank then certain weapons are gonna be effective for tanking like chaos is a tanky type weapon hammer is also a tanky type weapon uh, elemental is DPS gunslinger this is DPS as well but a lot of the weapons can do multiple things like heal or increase your defense or do more damage so I'm gonna go with trick store for this one actually no let's go with hammer and blade of oh, damn it I can't I can't decide um, let's do shotgun hammer shall we Punisher primary shotgun secondary hammer that sounds interesting difficulty four stars so the role here is to you know endure enemy attacks but you can make it a DPS class we'll go ahead and talk about that later on so once you've done that you will now create your nickname which is basically your main primary name that uh, players are gonna be adding you by but you also have to put in a first name and last name as well so I'm just gonna put review and end it with review as well because that makes absolutely no sense oh no I'll change that let's go first let's go impressions <laughs> way to advertise there so this outfit here is what you'll get for completing uh, for picking the class but then you can revert to your that outfit as well so I'm just gonna go with that one that's for picking the class and then we'll hit the play button this is a very very story heavy game so um, I think I strongly believe that you know one of the best things about this game is the story that has not changed since the secret role and that's what they're trying to continue by relaunching the game so you'll see a lot of cutscenes and this is one of it I'm not going to spoil it for you guys so I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this cutscene and we'll head straight into the tutorial where we can talk about some of the changes but yeah do expect a lot of cutscenes in this game every quest or mission as it's known in Secret World Legends every time you pick it up especially the main missions they're fully voiced all cutscene and I highly encourage you to check it out and you know just watch the whole thing if you've not played this game before because it's, it's pretty awesome so here we are waking up um, in the middle of the night and just to give you guys a short summary overnight you've become a superhero Gaia has sent a bee down your throat and that bee has given you um, special powers so this is the tutorial and a big change from the previous game is that you know it used to be tap targeting you could hold down your right mouse button and just move around that's all gone now this is a completely new system this is the radical mode and the radical mode is basically that you know the target cursor in the middle of the screen you move your mouse and your character moves along with it and there's a new interaction system so to pick up this quest in the old game you press the mouse button and you know on the screen and open up that thing but here you can just hit the F key and that's your new interaction button and you know here you'll see the context of whatever and you'll just click accept nice. and that's how easy it is you can also move to mouse mode by hitting the alt key and that's gonna bring up your mouse and then you can click everything else here on your screen oh that's my uh, add-on there Should probably move that away right so the one thing that you're gonna notice is my combat bar let's just pick up this weapons here first this is your introduction to your primary weapon and I is gonna bring up the new inventory this has all been redesigned so it looks more it's got a cleaner look it's it's very stylized but also very plain um, you know it just doesn't do much for me but it tells you a lot of the your, your character stats at, at a glance so now you've equipped your primary weapon and your secondary weapon will be the hammer which is what I picked earlier on so what that means is now you'll see the first couple of shotgun skills 
uh, coming up on my bar and I, I need to stress that this is not the default key mapping the default key mapping involves your left mouse button and your right mouse button to do attacks as well as the Q button over here uh, to do your basic ability and I've gone ahead and changed that to number nine, two, three, four, five, six, because that's how I prefer it to be. Uh, but just keep in mind, players, new players, especially those who are watching this for the first time, that this is going to be completely different when you start the game. I remapped it because I found it. I found this layout. This is my preferred layout, basically. So having the, dead uh, the basic the ability, dead. every weapon will have a basic ab ability. So for shotgun, it's pump action and you can only have one basic ability on your bar at any one time you cannot have two and you cannot have a hammer basic ability and what basic ability does is that if you look here you see this blue bar that is your energy so some skills like my number five skill over here both barrels you'll see that it consumes one shell but it also consumes three shotgun energy and that's the blue bar over here so if i were to hit this thing right now you'll see that my energy has gone down so the number nine here which is your default button is going to be q is a basic attack that does not take energy so in between using all the energy consuming skills you'll have to spam your basic ability to you know regain energy or whatnot so that's one of the big changes in the combat system uh, here in Secret World Legends. Let's go ahead and dispatch some of these guys and then we'll see what weapon uh, char characteristics are all about because every weapon now has special characteristics that um, sets itself apart from other weapons in this game. Be mindful of the voices. Listen to the voices that whisper in your sleep. Alrighty. You must learn focus and control. The Watchers will intervene only in dreams and only once. Every weapon becomes a unique focus for your abilities. Excellent. The so now we get to learn um, the special weapon characteristics of units. shotguns. Every and shot for shotguns, basically, uh, you have a shell mechanic, so your shotgun will have a bunch of shells so the orange one is you know extra dots this is a bleed uh, this is uh, armor piercing shells which reduces the mobs uh, you know mitigations this one does extra damage and this one restores your health so once you deplete your first line of uh, am ammunition you'll you'll get to reload all your shotgun skills will show your reload icon but the reload icon will be one of these shells so you get to pick which shell you want to reload next which is an interesting approach um, you know to shotgun from what it previously was which is kind of cool so let's go ahead and show this in action so we also got a third skill now a new skill this is opening shot consumes two uh, shotgun energy this one increases critical power so let's go ahead and start the fight with that and then we'll use that so see now I'm out of shells I have to reload I can either pick between a healing one or an extra damage one so I will pick the extra oh well, unfortunately, the monster died because I was using a dot, so... But that's basically how shotgun works. Every weapon has a different mechanic. Hammers, for example, will have rage. Elemental, as the weapon, you'll have a heat meter, which I personally find my favorite of them all. But that's basically it. So that is one of the big changes when it comes to Secret World Legends, is that it is a... It has a more... I would say, you know, engaging combat system in a way that it's never got players to be so invested in what they're doing in terms of the combat system. A lot of the complaints are a lot of the reasons why, you know, many players couldn't get into the old game Secret World is because the combat was, you know, the, the comments, if I remember right, were boring, repetitive, uninspiring, clunky. And some of the animations in Secret World Legends, you know, it reuses the old animations in the Secret World. That's the one thing they did not change or did not have the time to change or just did not have the money or the, you know, maybe the, the, the engine that they built it on could not be upgraded or whatever. So a lot of the animations are still the same, which is kind of disappointing. But at least they've done something to the combat system that's made it, in my opinion, a lot more enjoyable, at least for me. So that's my first impressions about the combat system and then the radical system works as well see it drops something and in the old game you know you'd had to like okay right click on it and see if it used it was it wasn't as responsive this one as long as you're in the area 
you're not even highlighting it, you'll see that it turns yellow. All you gotta do is just press the F key, the interact key, and boom. So solving puzzles and investigation missions and all that stuff later on in the game is an absolute... It, it's, it's, it's better, it's easier for me, and I kinda like it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get out of the tutorial because we've already spent 15 minutes in here so far and I won't spend the last 10 minutes or so looking at uh, some of the changes in game. So what I'm gonna do here is I will uh, fast forward and catch you guys up in a sec. Be right back. Alrighty, 15 minutes later and we're out of both tutorials. It does take quite a while to uh, navigate your way through the tutorials but they are super important. I highly recommend you know, new players to do them and you know read everything and make sure you get acquainted with the tutorials here in secret world legends because they are pretty important to teach you a lot of the basics when it comes to combat and stuff like that so this is important to show off it's one of the big changes um i just picked up a phone and that's basically you know how you turn in your uh quests and missions when you're done you have to submit a mission report and that's basically control r now so you'll hit control r and it'll bring up the uh, you know, end mission report, which is where you get your weapons and XP and stuff like that. I'll show that off later. So this part of the tutorial is pretty important because it'll teach you the new upgrading system, which replaces the old crafting system in the secret world. So let's go ahead and pick up a shotgun here, which remember is my primary weapon. Um, so I'm gonna equip that here. So I've got a shining new shotgun, and here's an SMS from my boss the faction handler for the Illuminati, Kirsten Curie, basically just blah blah blah. And what it what that is supposed to help us with is how we're gonna upgrade my primary weapon right now. So I've just picked up a bunch of old weapons from this crate and these are lower in quality. Um, for those of you that have played Secret World in the past you know how the quality system works. Green is basically your uncommon, higher than green will be blue, which is rare, higher than blue is purple, which is epic, and higher than purple, there's a new uh, color, which is yellow, called mythic, and then higher than that is red artifact, so lots of higher quality to plow through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the weapon. So what's changed in Secret World Legends is this new panel here. This is the new crafting panel called upgrade. You open it by hitting Y. So when you have a bunch of weapons from loot bags and you know drops or rewards that you don't want to use you can get rid of them easily by just upgrading your current weapon and making it more stronger so you can see here the the uh, shotgun has a level one so every weapon has levels and this is indicated by the bar over here and then under the empowerment slot you're going to fill it in with all your filler weapons so let's do one two three four and then five. Now the important thing here is that because this is a shotgun and my primary is a shotgun, when I uh, sacrifice another shotgun, I get double the XP. So that's 2.5 times more XP for sacrificing a shotgun. Just keep in mind that you wanna be sacrificing lower quality weapons than the one that you have. So if you have two pips, for example, this yellow dot is one pip, which means MK1. And you can see what the MK is. This is restoration. That's the suffix. The suffix is restoration. So every weapon will have different suffixes. If you get two pips, that means MK2. And then MK3 is, of course, the best one. So don't go sacrificing your MK3s to power up an MK1. Don't do that. Make it the other way around. Make sure you're upgrading the best ones and not sacrificing the best ones. So once you put everything in here, you hit the assemble button. And now you see it is now a level 4 shotgun mk1 and this is just some graphics to help you understand um, how it works and the same was also done for your other gear in the game there's no armor here it's all talismans which means your belt your headpiece your finger um, your chain that's how it works so let's go ahead and equip that now we're going to do the same for the secondary weapon which is the hammer because of my starting class and you cannot at this point you, there's no way to change your class anymore once you've picked a class you've got to stay with it which is in my opinion kind of sucky but that's one way how they uh, you know used to monetize the system previously this is the training room in your factions HQ you can check out all the weapons available to you and pick one and go and fight these uh, these dummies over here to test out whether you actually like it or not that's gone that's no longer here which kind of sucks uh, kind of wish they'll bring that back um, but so far, once you've selected a starting class at the character creation, you're pretty much stuck with it until you get enough uh, points or currency, which are these two things up here, uh, that one mark a favor to buy another weapon page. So I can also upgrade 
my hammer right now with the other bunch of crap that I picked up and again look hammer and hammer extra points so this is a good habit to keep if you have a lot of spare hammers lying around you can trade you know trade other weapons with other players to get the weapons that you need which will make upgrading your weapons faster and you know more cost efficient right now it says assemble for zero but that's not the case when you go out into the world and you start questing these will take anima shards which is this currency over here and anima shards here let me just show you what the currencies are you've got aurum which is a premium currency marks of favor which is something you get for completing daily challenges and this one marks of favor is what you'll be using a lot to unlock new weapons to buy uh, sprint upgrades when you use the auction house to buy new weapons and gear you're also gonna pay marks of favor and they are almost a premium currency but you can earn them you can earn I think free-to-play players can earn a cap of 10,000 a day by doing dailies or something anima shards drop from everywhere killing enemies and whatnot and that's the main currency that's gonna be used to upgrade your weapons so you want to get a lot of anima shards get them fast so I'm all decked out now I'm level 4 and level 3 on my primary and secondary weapons uh, and let's go ahead and get out. So I'm gonna be fast forwarding some more because there's a lot of story content in between I'm um, not gonna spoil it for you so you can go ahead and play that on your own. I will see you guys shortly Alright folks, so here we are in Agartha those of you that have played Secret World before this is the Agartha um, the hollow tree basically this is your transportation hub throughout the secret world and secret world legends you can visit any region in the game all those little portals lead you to maps all the maps in the game from uh, New England and Maine all the way to Egypt and Transylvania but this platform here this is brand new this is the hollowed halls which is a fantastic new change for secret world legends you can see it is where players hang out because what they've done is They've included bank tellers here. So these are all banks. You can access your bank uh, right from this person over here. And then over there, this is the auction house. So you can look for stuff here. And what's interesting as well is the new exchange. What this is. Remember I talked about Aurum, which, which is the premium currency. You can use Aurum to do a lot of things. You can buy you know, extraordinary upgrades and stuff. Like let's say you go to your fusion window which is currently locked but basically later on you know you can buy items that will speed up your uh, weapon leveling process or increase the rarity or increase the quality of your both your talismans and weapons you can buy items for that um, using Aurum so how to get Aurum well I told you you could get your marks of favor by doing your daily challenges you can then either sell your marks of favor uh, and what I mean by sell is you could buy Aurum for marks of favor or if you have loaded pockets, you could buy a bunch of Aurum and sell those for marks of favor. So this entire exchange is run by the players themselves. It's a player-driven economy going on right here. These are the current uh, you know, prices for, for that. Okay, so if you want to buy Aurum, you can see the gold bar. You just click the plus, the plus button. And that is the prices of Aurum. $4.99 US dollars for that. $9.99 for $1,005. That is basically how you purchase Aurum. So this is the new Hollow Halls, and it's really, it's awesome. This is a great change uh, to the game, a uh, lot more convenient now. And at the sides, you'll see a whole bunch of vendors for uh, Mount's vendor over there. That's Pets, and then it goes on and on and on. And the other vendors in here, they do take the other currency, which is a Third Age Fragment, which you get from Caches. And you can see Cache Keys, I've got zero right now. Uh, cache Keys drop on a daily basis for those who become a uh, patron. Patron is the subscribing or the VIP in this game that's called Patron, and these are the benefits. You get a whole bunch of XP gain, you know, double APSP points, unlimited anima leaves. And anima leaves, if you hit Shift T, you'll see that you can jump around to all the different maps in here. Um, if you become a you know patron, you can jump around for free. If you're a free player, you have to pay anima shards, which I already told you is important for you know leveling up your weapons and stuff. Um, you also get, you know, dungeon keys, and that's a really interesting uh, thing going on with dungeons. Is because uh, every dungeon in Secret World and the and Secret World Legends now has a, you know, as you guys know, six dungeon bosses. Once you defeat the boss, a chest will spawn, and you have to spend uh, your daily keys to unlock a, a chest. Uh, you know, and you could drop anything from distillates, which is used to level up, uh, add more XP to your weapon, um, and other stuff as well. So. Uh, let's see how many keys you get as a free player 
you will get uh, 10 dungeon keys and these replenish every day if you are a patron you'll get 18 keys so that's that so oh here we go daily login rewards so yeah this is a new thing with uh, secret world legends never had I don't think secret world had this no it didn't so basically these reset once you hit the highest thing but they do have some awesome stuff they give you free SP free AP and that is a well, it tells you a patron bonus, so you're not actually getting that. But this is a cache key that you know patrons get daily to open a RNG lockbox. So I clicked that, and I am going to get. Well, I clicked it, but I didn't get anything. <laughs> oh, that's weird. So I didn't get anything here, or at least it's not showing up on my inventory. So I don't know if that's like a bug or anything. Anyway, let's all, let's head on in here, and then we'll look at more changes. Okay, so I just realized why. Uh, I did not get it. It's because at the bottom right here, it is under my delivered items. Congratulations, Gopher. Yeah, and there's a new level up system as well. As, as you can tell, I just leveled up. Um, and you can see the XP bar at the bottom here. I'm now level 3. And you know, at certain points in the level, this is where you're going to get SP and AP. And those of you who are familiar with the secret role, you already know what that is. N is going to open all your weapon pages. So, like, I've got shotgun and uh, hammer already unlocked because that's the class that I picked. But then you've got all the other weapons on this page as well. And you can see the, the cost for these. You can unlock them paying 400 Aurum or you can unlock them with 5,000 marks of favor. Um, the more weapons you unlock, the next one's going to be more expensive and more expensive. So you do want to be careful uh, on how you plan your progression. Just so, you know, you don't buy the weapon that you don't want to use too early and then you're kind of stuck with it. So at the bottom here, AP and SP, you'll see those icons, how many of each you get. And these will be used to buy points as you already, uh, as the tutorial earlier would have probably shown you. So for example, this one takes 10 AP. This is a hammer special ability. So I'm going to need 10 AP before I can unlock that and drag it to my bar. So that's basically what AP and SP is. At the same time, weapons now have an expertise bar as well. You can see I'm level 1. So the more I'm going to use my hammer and the more I use my shotgun, my expertise will go all the way up to level 50, I believe it is. And that's going to increase your critical damage and your critical chance as well. So big changes there. And now we are out in the world, the first zone, um, which a story cutscene is going to play now. But I'm going to skip because I am super rushing for time now. We are way past ha, you know, the time I, I set for a first impressions look. And, you know, for new players that have not played this game before, I mean, this is pretty standard stuff. You'll see that Jack Boone over here, one of the first NPCs you'll meet. Oh, look, a fellow player. Hello, Samantha. But your first NPC, Jack Boone, you click F. That's going to be your first mission. So let's go ahead and pick that up real quick. And I'm going to skip this one. And now for missions, you'll see on the right side, that's your tracker. You got tiers. Every mission has tiers, one to five, one to three, one to four. It depends on, you know what the mission entails so this one's basically out in the world you know killing zombies because solomon island just for a brief recap of the story right now you know something's happened and the world is changing and one of the drastic places where shit's going down is actually here in maine a fictional town of kingsman in maine where you know zombies have started coming up and there's a fog uh, you know just random influences you know stuff you've seen in hp lovecraft and you know Stephen King, The Mist. You know it's got all these urban horror influences, which is really cool. If you really enjoy that setting and that story-driven narrative experience in, in an online game, then I, I do recommend Secret Gold. You check it out. So that's basically most of the changes, um, you know, to to Secret World Legends based on the old game, The Secret World. Let me just think if there's something else I have not covered. We've done weapons. Okay, we've done the XP bar. Um, PvP and everything, you know, there, there's a group finder tool which you hit shift and uh, V, it will bring it up, but that only unlocks at level 10. That's how you're gonna be jumping into PvP. PvP is at level 10. So, yeah, again, free to play. Uh, as, as a free to play player, you know, things will be a bit slower, of course. Um, so, the game encourages you to go to be a patron, be a VIP. That's totally up to you. If you enjoy the game, then go ahead and do it. If, if you don't, then, you know, the entire story, all the story, all the DLC packs and everything from the old game is brought forward here and it's completely free. So you can pretty much play the entire game for free without spending a single cent. Uh, it's also been made easier. I can't really show you too much because I'm running out of time. But trust me, you know, a lot of the content is super easy now, but it's not to not to dumb down. 
especially here in the first zone. The first zone has been made more streamlined uh, to make new players more familiar. But once you get to the later zones, even after this one, when you get to the Blue Mountain up here and then you get to Savage Coast, difficulty goes back, you know, to being being normal and being challenging again. So really, my, my two cents on the relaunch is that, you know, they've, they've gone ahead and they've worked reworked the combat system. They've, of course, had to change some systems to make it... Uh, to, to suit the free-to-play market and, and to monetize certain systems that other games do as well. A lot, I, I don't generally like the idea of RNG boxes, but hey, it is a MMO trope that d does come with free-to-play games. And, you know, it's, is, is it pay-to-win or not? Really, that depends on your definition of pay-to-win and what you're really trying to achieve in games like these. But so far, if all you want to do is enjoy a good story in a game, this game has a good story, and to me, that's all that matters. Um, so, yeah, if you are interested in checking it out, go ahead and get it. It's free to play. I believe it's launching on Steam this weekend. I don't know the exact date, but it is coming to Steam, so you can use your uh, Steam wallet to purchase Orm and buy Patreon and whatever. And that's basically it. I, I wanted to spend, you know, 10, 20 minutes talking about this, but it's gone on longer than that. So, hey, if you enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more MMO content. Um, yeah, enjoy the game if you plan on playing. As ever, I'm Adrian from MMO's World, signing out.